And here we are. Welcome everyone to today's esports talking esports show, episode number two. My name is Josh Gain, and welcome along. It's so good to have everyone with me today. If you if you're here or not, doesn't matter. You can join the show live at any time and uh, let us know your thoughts on any of the topics we're going to be going through. Um, it is a very cheap to produce show, but I wanted to go through each week what is happening in the world of esports because there's so much that can happen sometimes and i think it can be a little bit difficult to sort of find a good source where everything is aggregated into one and at the same time a place where we can share our opinions on how it's being run what we thought of the quality of it um, and the future of this sport itself so welcome along. My name is Josh Gain. Like I said, you can get involved at any time during tonight's stream. It will be cut up and put on YouTube and Facebook later for those who didn't get to see it live. But if you did miss it live, don't forget, it usually goes out on a Sunday um, at 3 p.m. GMT plus 10 is the time zone here in Brisbane, Australia. Um, but I had some internet issues, so we're going to do this whole thing again today. And hopefully we don't have... Um, we don't run into any Thank trouble you for joining me um the first thing on the list this actually happened last night was the codemasters uh dirt rally world series both the rally cross and just the rally events um the winner for rally was killian delormo he won the dirt rally 2.0 world series rally cross champion i haven't actually heard from him yet so because this is pretty recent news let's uh listen in and now to our champion. It's sunk in a bit. Maybe we can have your brother in to help us with some translation. Uh, just some final words to Hold sum up how he feels. Always awkward, isn't it? It's really impressive. I don't have a lot of words. He doesn't have a lot of words. He's uh, not considering yet uh, the fact that uh, at 16 years old, he's a uh, world champion of dirt. And uh, he's really happy. And uh, he doesn't have a lot of words for the moment. And what is next for him? Quelle est la prochaine étape pour toi? Bah, s'entraîner, s'entraîner, devenir, essayer de pousser encore un peu plus mon niveau. Puis on essaiera de revenir pour le prochain championnat. Keep working on the game and uh, be ready uh, for the next champ. Right. So yeah, obviously he's happy. 16, so he's quite young. Um, that's pretty pretty usual these days because um, to to be competitive in an esports world, you really need to put in the hours and the time. And he's obviously done that. So well, well done to Delormo, Killian. Um, yeah, he won the Rallycross event. Obviously, Rallycross is where, you know, you have five or six cars. They had all the heats running. They had the commentators out there. Um, hey, it's this a good is the start. Stuff. Not too much wheel spin from him. Are they going to split the grid immediately? They do. Hus goes straight into the joker lap. Delomo down towards turn. We're going to try and find that tarmac on the inside. You can see it's a fast and hectic category of racing, which is really exciting to watch, actually. Yeah, Dave Marshall chucking one down the inside there in the blue, and he's gone straight up to third. So, yeah, well done. Um, it went pretty smoothly, as you can see. Uh, Motorsport Network uh, take a, a streaming partner for them. Um, they, they had some massive issues with Forza yesterday. Um, which we will talk about, um, but they, like I said, they also had the, um, yeah, the, just the normal rally, um, and it was this man here, Juna Pankonen, he won the Dirt 4 Championship, and now he's a Dirt Rally 2.0 World Series Champion, let's have a quick listen. Juna, you must have thought that you hadn't quite done it with those two little mistakes, you've had to wait, the emotion coming out now, what, what are it? Poor kid, he just wants to cry. It's a very interesting system that we do one by one the final because, like, I don't know. I think it, it's the factor that makes me cry here because it's like I had to wait that three minutes, four minutes at least to know whether I did I win or not. And I kind of felt like, like, zombie, zombie could have won it. But uh, I don't know. And a, a word for your competitor here this was super close between them. I mean, he, he, was, he was a tough guy to beat. Uh, absolutely, one of the best for sure. Absolutely. So, so next year, then you got to take it to him. Yeah. Congratulations. Well, Robin, congratulating Unip here. Fantastic, really emotional scene. That was, a bit awkward. was that a bit awkward? Esports sometimes is a bit awkward because we're not obviously the most outgoing. We're not always the most outgoing people, are we? 
Um, yeah, that was a bit weird. But um, as you saw, we well, didn't see there, but you can see here um, the way they do it. Everyone gets a one shot at a time. I right? think we can expect the guys to be on the pace, though. You know, this is the top of the top here. The people that are going to be setting the world records. So one, at, one by one by one. Robin Johnson is going to be very relaxed. Should Unipank have made a mistake? Everyone gets a run. The WRC 8 had theirs at the start of the year, and I, I think this is a much better way to do it. Let me know what you think. I'll show you, I'll show you this. Luck didn't really paid off. All four. Cost him a lot of time. And you can so see the ghost. On the way in. Seems like on, on tarmac now we said that. You see a ghost come tarmac, through in it. There so he is. Will be strong. So they're all and running on the track at the same time. With John Armstrong, but Nexel, once again, that guy is just So there's the guy the leading. Basically. I think the confidence is just with him and right everybody now. else following through. Focused. I think that's a, Ooh, and then he hangs on the I there. Think it's a pretty ingenious way to run a um, rally championship. So, um, I mean, dirt's a really good game. If I reckon if they did that, they'd uh, up the spectator level. That's one thing I think needs to have to be more attention paid to is the spectator options and the broadcasting capability um, because you want it to look good. And um, I'll give you a really good example of why we need it to look good later on. But yeah, Dirt War Rally, done and dusted. Now, here's an interesting one. Uh, Felipe Massa put a story out on his on Facebook this week. And we got a bit of a sneak peek at the Formula E Venturi simulator. So they had a projector just here. Um, and yeah, here's the just the cockpit that he sits in. It's... um pretty looks like it's much looks like down here we've got the computer running everything uh the wheel um it's a looks like a pretty decent setup and just behind that wall was the like the whole pit crew team like you'd see at a formula e event so yeah i don't know where this will set up it looks a little bit um expensive ghetto I, you could say but there it is a bit of a sneak peek at how the formula e guys do their training Mick Hazel also this week in GT Sport, winning some more manufacturer's races there for Lamborghini. Uh, Moritz Lohner for iRacing in the TCR Championship. He just set out that he was looking for some more pace. He said P5 felt really good. Um, but thanks to his teammates, Lee, Ock, Arthur and Abby Racer. And congrats to the GT3 car as well for winning their class for Williams Esports. So William Esports are on the up and up. They've got many teams everywhere being represented. And they're doing a lot better than the Formula 1 team. PS Fire logo as well. Um, everyone gave this a bit of a hard time this week. I don't know why. It's pretty much stayed the same since PS2, even PS1 days. So I don't think they need to innovate there. But the big news with that is that apparently haptic feedback is coming on the controller. So I don't know where they're going to put that on a PlayStation controller. Uh, the Steam controller here. Um, these pads have, I think, ha what you call haptic feedback. So, um, if they can integrate that probably into the shoulder buttons, um, you could get some really nice feedback for people who use the controller on Gran Turismo. That was the other thing that was said that there was some Gran Turismo uh, integrations with the new PS5 controller. So, fingers crossed, controller people out there get some interesting tech, and we get some interesting tech anyway out of the new console that's going to be released. In Christmas time. Um, McLaren Shadow putting the word out there for everyone to be a sim racer. That's what we like about sim racing and esports is that it is accessible to anyone. All you need is a console and a spare 80 bucks to go buy your favorite racing game. So, yeah, McLaren Shadow, why not pick up the wheel? Uh, and also, the 2020 Autosport International was out. Play Seat were there with Codemasters, so they were obviously sponsoring them for the event, including Forza and... Uh, the dirt game and they're so um showing off nascar heat i don't think there was a nascar heat esports event i haven't seen anything but if i do have any news on that oh we will talk about it next week so yeah that's that was this weekend just gone so if you if anyone went to that let us know what you thought if you've got any pictures or opinions on on what you saw we'd like to hear back from you um and aurelian here he posted a tweet earlier in the week he said he's had a small break from Forza Motorsport but he jumped back on and he managed to get a world record so I thought let's have a quick look he's in the Corvette so I think this is like a modified German truck but 
he was uh, pretty much all the way ahead of his ghost until the very end. You can see this is where the track gets modified a little bit. Because um, they sort of run out. You can see the ghost was just ahead, so close, and he got the power down. And he got the traction out of the corner just enough, and he pipped his ghost by probably the smallest of margins. And a 104.957 around there. So congratulations to Aurelian. And we'll keep an eye on you through the week, brother. So good, well done on the uh, um, the world record. Obviously, these were the esports shirts that you saw um, our guys wearing at the Dirt event here. See, there's the same shirt. Um, I was talking about esports shirts, especially in sim racing. I'm not so convinced that this is the right style for for esports. Um, like obviously for for football players and, and like you know athletic sports, this seems okay. Um, it's been a sort of a mainstay in the in the regular esports world for a while. So you know Rocket League, your Counter Strike, things like that, um, League of Legends, Dota, those sort of what you call regular esports, mainstream esports. Um, they've been using these shirts for years, but I'm not sure. I sh there must be something, be a better look out there than the sporty look. Um, could we just wear a cotton shirt, perhaps? Or maybe, not a race suit. Obviously, the race suit has its application in the world, real world of racing. Um, but, I don't know, is there something better than these, I don't know what you call this, but this sporty looking shirt. Obviously, we need to get the sponsors uh, some room. Um, they need to be shown off and, and whatever. But, is this... Is this a solution to esports and our sort of apparel, or is there something better? I would really like to hear you guys' feedback on that, and maybe you do think it's the right thing, and um, and so forth. But anyway, that was just something I wanted to bring it, bring up and just give you an example of what it all looks like and what I was talking about. Oops, um, some sad news for a fellow Australian, Daniel Shields. He made an announcement. That um, he's no longer part of Mercedes in the F1 esports team. Um, he also says he's probably not going to go to the pro draft this year. Um, so he's had a few people telling him that he should go to the pro draft. Um, there's a comment here, need as many people to bully you as possible. I'm not sure what that's about. Don't know if that's an in joke or something. But yeah, Daniel Shields, he said it was coming. He's happy to have announced it now. Um... I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why he's no longer a part of it. It's a competitive world, um, but at the same time, this is probably why I think there was someone else that was just announced. I don't have the name offhand, but a new announcement for William Esports was Ryan Lutzer. He's now signed for the 2020 eNASCAR iRacing World Championships, racing for Williams Esports. So he's looking for some success this year. So congratulations to Ryan. And, um, yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on the eNASCAR series now in iRacing. Um, also, I just want to say I'm now a confirmed peasant. Um, I said the comment because Grid were talking about themselves having a sale on their game. I don't really like Grid that much. And I said, if it's free, don't, unless it's free, don't bother. Um, and, yeah, was called a peasant. So I am now a commentator and a peasant all in one. But talking about Grid... They did run a livery competition, and this man, Cage Matsuri, won it. Um, they're going to include it in their Season 2 pack for Grid, which is coming in the next few weeks. I think it's a little bit of a money grab from Codemasters. I don't like the way they've sort of been doing this with their recent games, the way they've been adding cosmetic stuff. I especially think for a competition uh, like this, where he's now it's running on the Alonso cars that you know, everyone should be able to use this, because it's, you know, Fernando Alonso picked this livery to win, so, anyway, if you do have grid and want to use it, you got to pay some more money to uh, Codemasters, make sure you've got the Season 2 pass, without it, it doesn't look like you'll be able to get it, Codemasters, come on, do better than this, um, another Codemasters story though, um, not so much esports, but we all would have probably played these games through the years, um, such as this is Micro Machines, they're releasing um, the Royal Mail in the UK, some collectible stamps. Uh, 
celebrating years of gaming. So 1991 included Micro Machines. There's heaps of other ones, but I thought that was a standout for me. Um, if you want to go check the whole collection, you can check out Royal Mail Stamps, um, and they've got everything there. But Codemasters and uh, Micro Machines now... They've got a legacy in stamps, so congratulations. Uh, last thing to do here before we go on to the next topics. Um, this happened at the Abu Dhabi endurance race. If you're a bit squirmish, look away. But um, let us know what you think about this little situation that happened on track. The marshal was um, directing his driver to to come out. And um, yeah, a bit of an accident. Welcome to Taku. What is cracking, friend? I'm doing well, bro. I'm doing well, but um, have a look at this. Have a look at this one. This, uh, if you're a bit squeamish, like I said, don't watch this and look away. But let us know what you think. So he's directing the car to come out. The car's about to come out. Watch this other guy from the next pit lane across. Push, bang. So there was an incoming car, and. He obviously, everyone pushes, you know, you've seen it if you've watched World Endurance Championship Racing, the other guys in the pit lane pushing the cameramen and stuff out of the way because they want the pit lane clear. And um, he obviously didn't do it on purpose, but the team did get a penalty for it. And, oh, so mistimed. And um, that's why they wear helmets in the pit lane. Um, the other team got a penalty, of course. But, um, yeah, I don't know. That was uh, it was a bit of a shock moment, actually. I know. Um, bloody crazy stuff. Anyway, you got to be careful in the pit lane. That's why they say you got to be careful. Um, now, I think these were the screenshots that I talked before about the dirt. It was. Uh, let's go on to. Let's start at GT Sport. Um, so GT Sport, uh, David Perel. He's a mad mad fan of the game um and he's also a real race car driver in the blanc pain he drives a ferrari so respect um but there's a website called gt sports stats that was having some issues and perel's come in and he's now sponsored the website so he can stay up so we can all thank david perel for that one so he's put his own money um into the project and um we can all get some more tasty tasty statistics let's go have a look at the website quickly as well so yeah he made another announcement great pleasure i announced david perel has become the official sponsor i'd like to thank everyone who came forth to help me out it meant a lot i hope this sponsorship will make the website even better so this is the website here gtsport.r1s3.net and i can pick my region and it has oh which that's really good so it has all the times for the daily races which is nice so brought to you by coach dave that's david perel didn't know we had a coaching website oh cool so he's doing some sim racing coaching that's pretty cool um and looks like we've also got the kai super gt mick Hazel, maybe and david perel is that uh, people who are sponsored? That's pretty cool. Um, GT Sport username. I can. You can't see it on the screen, but I'll have a look at mine. Let's hang on. So here I am. What does this button do? So I'm level 39. That's right. Safety rating. My ranking. My race records. Nicely accessible. Um, latest races. I don't do a lot of races, unfortunately. Uh, there we go. So I've got third in the manufacturers, you can see there. And then you can do a whole bunch of other dartering. This is a really good website. So uh, the link I will put in the chat right now for those who want to go here. Uh, obviously, David Prell, he made another announcement after the GT Sport update. Um, and then he said here, this is the new penalty system that, sorry, he says, the new penalty system is what happens when a developer reacts to their user's displeasure. Reactionary fixes have unknown consequences. Everyone complains when the Gran Turismo takes so long on updates and features. Hopefully now you can see why they usually take their time. Um, 
they do usually take their time, and I'm usually pretty grateful for that. Um, I don't. Is it was a pretty much a reactionary measure. We never really hear from Polyphony Digital. I don't like. It's so hard to tell if they're listening or not, um, because they we never get feedback from them. But um, this is what David Pearl thinks. He thinks the reaction was too quick, um, and it's gone way too far the other way. I don't know David what you Perrell think. signed in. I think he's pretty much right, and yeah, that's sort of what happens when you react. Um, interesting thing that happened this week. Lexus were showing off the skate photos from GT Sport and then taking photos of their cars in those real-world locations. So you can see we've got the... Um, the I think this is the GT Sport photo here, and this is the real-world photo here. So... Very, very close indeed. Um, like, it's just... It shows you how much they've developed the game. Like, I'm fairly sure this is the real one. Just... They've got, obviously, a starburst filter on the camera for the, the light to do that. Um, and just sort of the light inside the cabin and the edges of the car. And then you look at this one. Again, which, at a glance, is so hard to tell. But um, the interior is a bit too lit up, and you can see some sharpish edges where the aliasing, anti-aliasing is happening. But other than that, unbelievable photorealism from GT Sports. So well done, and uh, yeah, Lexus had a bit of fun. Um, E-Team Brit, um, I saw this got posted... Uh, E-Team Brit, the all-disabled driving sim racing team. So let's... I did forgot to get their website up, but um, I want to show you some of their stuff. Um, they've got some modified uh, like wheels and stuff. Um, it's quite interesting. Let's um, have a look. They're there for people with mental health issues, PD, post-traumatic stress disorder, so PTSD, um, and um, disabilities. So... They're open to anyone of any ability, which is really nice. And they use iRacing um, at the same time. But they've also got some very, very... And they'll train you up. They've got some very cool tech, um, which can then be utilized in the real world. So it's really cool to see how something in the sim racing world can be developed and then retrofitted to the real world, which is nice to see. Um, I can't find the video that I wanted is to it? find now. So you can see, like, his wheelchair was sort of mounted onto the, the podium. And then you can see... You can see there's a whole bunch of little contraptions going on for weaker hands to allow them to shift. Um, and obviously they support grassroots racing. And they use the same sort of technology in the sim world back into the real world which is really really cool. can't find it but yeah they're um yeah some some revolutionary uh advancements happening and it's uh e-team brit in the uk an all disabled sim racing team which uh mainly focus on i racing at the moment but um yeah they're planning to uh expand that this year so next is the F1 in China. This happened last week. Uh, so here's, we, I did talk about it, but the event is over now. Here's just some images from that event. So it was a eSports final event just for Chinese drivers. And um, this was a tweet regarding it. Dr. Julian Tan said, he said, congratulations to Tan, Tian Yu and Yuan Yifan who are the winners. He said, on making history, becoming the inaugural F1 Esports China, China Championship. You've made China proud to become our first ever Chinese drivers. And then it was only streamed on this Chinese platform called Hua. Uh, and they had concurrent 1.6 million. So, obviously, esports in China is a huge business. This is why companies go chasing the money there. It is not surprising, especially when you get in just one country alone, an audience like that. Um... And there are the two guys in the winning stage. There it was. It was a huge event. Lots of production values. And we're going to see them in the F1 esports racing this year. So who knows? A Chinese driver could make history and win uh, F1 esports this year. Now, Le Mans esports 
it was on. And God, did they not deliver as good as I thought they would. Um, it was announced. It was the Pro Teams Invitational Race of the Autosport Show. And they had many of uh, big eSport teams there. So there was sort of the setup. Um, and one of the crazy things was um, Lando Norris went to it. So Lando Norris has rocked up to a Forza event. Here he is playing on the equipment. Why is he not turning up to the Formula One? Um, F1 eSports event. He didn't come to the final this year. Um, and I think I even saw Max Verstappen at the GT Sport final in Monaco. Charles Leclerc was also at the Auto Sport for the Dirt Rally thing, I think. I did. I think I read that somewhere. I don't have pictures of it. But, you know, when it comes to fan engagement, every other esports seems to be doing it a lot better than what F1 esports does. And I really like F1, and I'd like to see it succeed, but I just wonder what F1 and Codemasters are doing. But there is one thing that uh, both Codemasters and Forza are doing so wrong, and that is the spectator mode. Um, so... As you can see here, here were some comments about the ending of the race, and I will show you it. It was a dramatic ending. It was. They would did the two hours around Le Mans. Um, they had to do driver changes, and at the end, there was two tenths between Williams Esports and, I think, Jota. And he said, perhaps it was dramatic, but we missed everything. Has the director thought it was better to show the crowd during the last corner? Fantastic direction. Missed everything. Dramatic, also known as Drunk Cameraman, director that missed the crucial bit. I want to show you what it was. It was it was unforgivable what happened. And then coming through to fight for... Big production, big, big production, I want to point out. Got Motorsport as a partner. With them. So the guys are sitting here talking, indeed, and, and then bang, they're into the race. And, are, so and then we're already today. like, uh, we go, we look, we're already at the, the Dunlop curves, under the Dunlop, the Dunlop bridge, bridge, right? So we've missed the start. Anyway, they had to do a restart. So the restart took them another 15 minutes. It took, like, these poor casters had to sit there and make some... I don't know. So it wasn't... It went off to a shaky start, and I understand that's easy, that's easy enough to do. It happens to me all the time. But when you when you think about such a, a big group, like, you know, at the Autosports show with the Motorsport Network, Forts are there... You're just like, this stuff really shouldn't happen that yeah, often. Sure, but, at the same time, but the ending, oh, check this out. Look how much they're closing this is the last lap. Right with the Williams team now as they come out of Corner, it was, it was tense. That's the Williams eSport team in front. Commentary was on point. The Autosport Team's Invitational after two hours, it's come down. This was the Pro Team event. They'd done two hours of racing. And look, there was absolutely nothing in it. Eight tenths at this moment. Coming up to Indianapolis. And he was closing and closing and closing. And like, I even I know the result of this. And it was really, really tense. And um, w there's a big problem with Forza and, and Codemasters and F1. Is not, not this directing that's happening here. But Forza, they use a lot of this camera angle because the external camera angles are all dynamic and fast changing and move so quick. It's really hard to, to tell what is happening in the race itself because it's really artistic. But um, so for one, see, like they have a few of these good at camera angles, but just like it's too slow or it's too quick and like really zoomed in and it's really hard to tell what's happening. Um, but check this out. Are they going to have to defend going into the four chicanes? I wonder. Jota getting very close now. It is getting seriously close. That was a mistake there from Williams. It looked like. Check this Jota out. Close in. This is directing come down to this really it's well. This ruined this event. Corner of the two-hour endurance. And that's going to surely have to be now some defending going on from Williams. Jota are going to have to look to the outside here. Williams are going to have to go defensive. Jota are going to try and lunch down the inside, are they? Here they come, trying to lunch down the inside. And what's the... Oh, no, big mistake. And that's a spin there from the Jota team. What Williams was that? Williams are going to take the win. Williams across the line. Give them a round of applause, everyone. What Williams was that? Win the Autosport team's invitation. I mean, congratulations to Williams. And there they are winning it. But, oh, my God. What was that? The camera angle was all wrong. And you, can, you can't you can see the chat here, but hang on. I'll, 
Anyway, the chat was just absolutely going ballistic because they just ruined it. Absolutely ruined it. It was F in chat. What the fuck camera? What the fuck camera? BS. F1 levels of directing here. Idiot director. What even is production? This is, this is an event that is sponsored by Motorsport Network. It's got Forza behind it. This is one thing that I really, really gets on my gears is if a game wants to be taken seriously as an esports game basically or a simulation and you want to put on a great show you need to put the tools in there for the broadcasters you need it to be easily watchable and yeah just like the artistic stuff is nice Gran Turismo Sport does it too but they give you the option to just have regular camera angles and so you can see the full picture of what's happening. So, yeah, both Forza, fix your game, and Formula One, fix your game. Because you're quickly going to be left in the dust by the likes of Project Cars, Assetto Corsa, Gran Turismo. I mean, Gran Turismo has done it perfectly. You plug a keyboard in, you get all these extra features, and voila, it's there. I mean, there's a few things I think I'd like to have. God, it is a hundred times better than anything that Co Playground Games at Forza or F1 at Codemasters does. Because that was terrible. Absolutely terrible. So it ended... Like, I, I like esports. I don't care what game it is. At the end of the day, it just ruined it for me. With the, um, the camera angles and that directing at the end was absolutely terrible. Dirt. Rig picks. This is how we want to end the show every week with everyone's favourite. Or just... Not even, doesn't have to be spectacular. I just want to see what everyone's putting out there. So I grabbed them off of Facebook and stuff. Um, this one's from Devin Reese. Um, he said he was super surprised how m having a bigger screen made to his lap times. So he said he wants to get the proper Logitech shifter and a cockpit. So addictive. He's sitting there playing F1. So he's got a pretty decent setup there, which I think a lot of us have. Um, this is from Apex Sim Racing. They put together a few photos and said to submit to them if you want to be part of an intro video they're making but look at look at the equipment they've got button boxes the porsche wheel um they've got like who's vanky like all the the sim rig around it shifter handbrake look at that seat there's more cushion on there than my actual racing than my car seat um triple screens everything so lots of money in this setup and it's beautiful to look at there it is uh, one day I'll have something like that. But anyway, we can all dream, can't we? But that's from Apex Sim Racing. Uh, this one's from Reddit. This one's from I am this what is 12. And there's his uh, setup there. It's got pretty decent um, rig there too. So shouldn't be much flex in that body there. This is a homemade one from Garcia Mark. I like it on VR. That's all you need, isn't it? Just a bit of wood. So he's done a really bit of innovative work there. Um, and this one didn't have a name, but it was on the Sim Racing channel on Reddit. Got the race room seat, Thrustmaster shifter and handbrake there. Um, and that looks like a BMW wheel, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. So some really cool tech out there. And he's also got his RGB lights and stuff on his computer, which I don't think are necessary, but anyway. Um, this one's from Paul Marsh. He's got the cheap setup as well. He says, loves it. Bit cheaper to build the rig. I'm slowly getting used to this wheel. I'm getting quicker. I feel like it's easier to control the car and maintain tire wear. And he wanted to see some other homemade rigs. If you've got them, submit them to Rig Picks here on the channel. Just message me on Facebook or on um, Instagram or even on Twitch itself. Or hit our Discord up. I'll give you the Discord link in the chat, guys. If you want to join the Discord where you can submit your rig picks and we'll put them on the show next week one's from jtg jew and he's got the super wide i think that's a lexus branded or a lotus wheel um he's racing seat looks like he's in a bit close everyone loves this shifter here and um, another screen to monitor his computer down there must be in the garage or something but anyway you fit it where you can so well done to those guys this week. They were the ones I saw that were interesting. Yeah, if you want to submit to Rig Picks, um, submit it on Discord, Twitch. You can send it to me, message, Instagram message, Facebook message, wherever you want to message me, it's all good.